Welcome everyone, Simon here from the Wales of Wall Street. We've got a quant video here for you today, QNT on the exchange. Welcome to the channel if you're new and welcome back if you've been with us for some time. So we're gonna go into a couple of topics around quant. Before we do so, please do make sure that you smash that subscribe button if you have not done so already. And please do hit that like button as well, the big thumbs up underneath helps the channel grow massively and to newer audiences so we can educate more people around the awesome things that we love to talk about on a daily basis so guys let's go straight into these topics so the first one i wanted to start with um quant has appointed a head of divisional sales so this happened about seven or eight days ago um so it's not new news but certainly some of those out there but have missed this news or uh, indeed maybe just slip slip the radar etc so this is really interesting because there's a great background here. Um, this is relating to, hopefully I pronounced this correctly, uh, Kirat, uh, who's joined Quant as a head of divisional sales, responsible for designing and executing the firm's over overarching business, sorry, development strategy, and building out the sales function. So 15 years of experience within the financial services will definitely bode well here. Um, but what is quite interesting, of course, is the background held within the account management side of things, particularly with the huge banking systems such as Citibank, uh, to name a few, as well as ran roles in Santander um, and Accenture. Now, of course, Accenture and a couple of these other banks and uh, technology partners are heavily involved in blockchain moving forward. A lot of these projects do work with the likes of Hyperledger and, of course, Quant in general. Um, and they do appear very regularly at events like Davos, for example, the yearly annual event from the World Economic Forum. So all of these things coming nicely into play. Um, I feel like the last year or so, a lot of the big top projects are really enhancing their ethos around leadership and making sure that they really pinpoint strategies in all departments of their business. And this is something that you would expect outside of the web free crypto blockchain world. Uh, and it's certainly no different to what people will be expecting, certainly in the financial industry when it comes to that Web3 application as well. Uh, one point here was really interesting uh, from Gilbert as well. Financial institutions and their corporate customers are racing to harness the power of blockchain, whether it be to launch their own programmable money, tokenize traditional assets, or even explore other solutions such as carbon credit or real estate tokenization provide the infrastructure that facilitates these many use cases. So we're reaffirming our commitment to our clients and further growth of the company. Kirat will be instrumental in this strategy. So exactly to my point, uh, that these kind of projects and technologies are very much ramping up uh, the leadership, the professionalism of what they do, entering new markets, entering it, it essentially bringing sectors really to the table. And that's ultimately what Quant wants, not just from the interoperability perspective, but actually taking care of a multitude of different sectors and opportunities. It's really interesting that they mentioned carbon credit and real estate tokenization in particular. There's something or both of those topics we definitely talk about on the channel very regularly. Uh, it'd be quite interesting to see what partnerships go further with the carbon credit side of things, as we know a couple that we cover on the channel and essentially a lot are very heavily rated with likes of uh, European Blockchain Commission, etc. at the moment. As our real estate tokenization, we know that Ripple does a lot in this area, Hedera as well, obviously partners to an extent of quant as we move forward as well. So very interesting to see, of course, Overledger has launched quite recently as well. Um, but I'm really interested to see the development of not just the team of quant, but where they move strategically forwards. Um, we know there's a lot going on. There's a lot of partnerships in the pipeline, and this will definitely come into fruition and certainly into public domain or public eyes as the months and this year concludes itself can you believe it it's mid-august already um how fast this year is going it's unbelievable um that out of the way guys the next topic is very odd indeed now i don't know if anyone saw this but just giving you a bit of background information so quant and lcx a while back about two or so years ago um announced a partnership Okay, relating to interoperability and working towards the ethos of progression towards the likes of central bank digital currencies and just the ecosystem in general. Um, I think that's always important in this space that partnerships deliver. Um, 
sometimes the partnerships are just done for marketing purposes and to enhance each other's communities but at this top level there's usually a lot of integration apis and things like that being worked on um, as well as some advisory aspects to each other as well so that is something that's been around for a while if any of you remember i remember watching this one specifically it was very interesting but when quant was added to the lcx exchange there was a bit of a partnership conversation and this is kind of related to this article here as to how it will help each other support each other this is where it gets a bit odd guys so august 11th literally four or five days ago <laughs> gilbert has messaged here on on twitter or x now isn't it copy and paste lcx question mark they say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery now this message kind of came out out of nowhere i find it a bit odd i find it a bit odd because you know you've got a founder a ceo is this getting a bit snipey? Um, possibly. Um, was it really needed? Well, you guys can make your own comments and thoughts and theories behind this. But um, people are actually asking in the in the comments section or replies to this message, how is the LCX quant partnership going? Um, and Gilbert replied, haven't had a client or business need to progress much since our initial discussions in 2021. Are you referring to the article? not necessarily the article, but certainly that that partnership integration uh, back in 2021. Priorities change, markets change, and client requirements change. We focus on what our clients want from our company and technology. So really interesting. Obviously, there's big views on here. Not too many people replying or, or, or sharing as such. Um, so that kind of puts a bit into perspective of like the publicized aspect of it. But there are absolutely some definite... Um, link ups in terms of information that each provide and certainly it's in in some ways he's correct that you know flattery uh, aspects of imitation uh, the sincerest form of flattery sorry uh it relates to this guys so in this message here uh so gilbert has written within the telegram group of 2019 by coming from the regulator uh, we love what is happening in regulation. It's something the market needed to help clean up the dishonest and bad actors. Now we're seeing the institutions stepping in and innovating at scale. We've all seen, all been hearing what the likes of Fidelity, SIX, uh, and NASDAQ, etc. are making public. That's just the start. There is so much more activity in progress that we all don't know about which will be revealed this year. Now, that's an interesting point. But then if you look at this... Uh, reply here i'm not sure about the timing of this but this is from lcx um as well by coming from the regulator and from the traditional finance we love what is happening in regulation it's something the market needed to help clean up the dishonest and bad actors now we're seeing the institution stepping in and innovating at scale we've all been hearing the likes of blackrock jp morgan paypal etc making public that's just the start there is so much more activity in progress that we all don't know about which will be revealed this year now this is really bizarre okay so yes it is a copy and paste um i love this uh message here from dr martin here uh this is priceless it's it's just a bit bizarre it really is bizarre um so i'm not going to read too much into this but i'm not sure if we should well certainly maybe the quant hierarchy should be even be wasting their time on things like this um yeah i'm sure they're very busy uh, they wanted to obviously get a point out there and to trace that back quite a bit is quite quite interesting also but again um you you see these bits of information um in relation to the the interaction between lcx and quant it's all here for people to read um i just find it i just find it a bit bizarre like the level of these companies i mean i know lcx is relatively new obviously uh, to to the table as such, albeit that it changed its token name, etc. But it's building uh, an exchange. It's doing well so far, and I'm sure it will have a great future in front of it. But yes, this this kind of overarching weird conversation going on here, and this weird back and forth. Um, I'm not quite sure where why it's sort of coming about, and and why um, these these guys have to waste time on it. To be honest, I don't know what you guys think. Someone, uh, I think I read a comment that's saying that, oh, maybe, you know, Quant's struggling with stuff and it's just feeling a bit of the tension and pinch. But 
I don't think that's massively true at all. I think Quan's massively heavily in, in, you know, involved in, in various different levels at the high level, by the way, uh, whether that be through the Digital Pound Foundation or certainly the application towards CBDCs, the interoperability of chains and technologies, the API framework, the overledger. So, you know, it, it's not like they're not doing anything, but I, I do find it very strange. I find a very odd uh, interaction and certainly to make it public, it, it kind of a bit disappointing in in my instance in the sense that well it's supposed to be like professional level here let's not get silly but that out the way guys that's kind of like the two topics for quant in this video very odd uh way to to look at it in in this way but um let's go into the chart of quant because we're still statically sat at this hundred dollar mark guys so it's a good dca opportunity for me personally obviously not financial advice or anything like that but i do like this current area i do still believe we will see lower regions of quant couple of reasons behind that which we mentioned in previous videos but if you knew obviously you may not have heard those uh, the data points aren't significant enough in my head personally to confirm that hundred dollars is a massive support level so okay we've stabilized ourselves around this 110 100 dollar mark but if you look historically there's not enough lower regions and what i mean by that is like around the 87 dollar mark even lower maybe at 60 dollars uh for for us to check those off now we could look at this in two ways we could say that quant has developed fantastically well there's a lot more confidence uh in, in these kind of projects and technologies uh, but also um, the stabilization can it very much interact in the fact that people don't want it to go below 100. So they're buying it at these levels because perhaps the quantities they have and the value that they have within the QNT token in their portfolios is trying to keep that afloat. Now, I don't know whether autom automatic market makers are being used or not at all. But of course, the QNT token is used for a lot of various different reasons. One in particular is the usage from the developer's perspective to actually build on their network. Um, so it's gonna have a massive future regardless to what we're doing as investors in the retail sphere. Um, and just generally those bigger traders, of course, probably don't want it to dip too much down, uh, down too much, sorry, further either. So that's why I've still got these buy orders at these lower regions, just in case we have that dip down. We have dropped below $100 on a few occasions in the last uh, few months, but very, small amounts and not for very long either within a week it tends to drag itself back up that fluctuation price point all the way up to 110 sometimes 120 like we saw back here in june so there's opportunity for definitely some trades in the short term but for me i'm a long-term holder of quant so i'm trying to accumulate as much as i can at the lowest prices possible as well um, hundred dollars in the grand scheme of things where we believe quant will go is perhaps not a giant amount but on paper of course it does look like you know not too many people like to look and chuck a hundred dollars here and there i certainly don't but it's one of those things i have to do if i want the quant in my portfolio so i try and do it strategically but as i said does because you get paid doesn't mean you have to throw money in this instantly look at the data look at the history but also look at the opportunities in the lower regions okay so if we're accumulating in the dca fashion at this rough 100 dollar mark uh, and it does come down lower of course that's a great opportunity yes there's a bit of a loss there in that instance but if you're a long-term holder it doesn't matter too much but from that short-term perspective of course um you know it's just about that risk management element which is why we always talk about dca so much on the channel uh purely from that fact that it, it doesn't eliminate risk completely but you can at least get opportunities at various different levels and of course if it goes flying up and we miss the opportunity of more down here well at least we're in that profit aspect and take advantage of that if you wanted to as well from the buying perspective for me personally the reason other reason why i like dcaing around this area at the moment if we look at the RSI's on the bottom left, this is in a great uh, bite point for me. I tend to look at things on the 14 day between round about the 42 to 44 mark. This is currently floating under 40, which ticks that box significantly. The 28 days showing 44, that's really low as well. And the 90 days creeping down also. So there's plenty of opportunity in the short term, as well as potentially slightly longer term opportunities in the chart. But my point being is that this is stabilizing really well around this area. So we're kind of in a dilemma in the sense that the volumes are reducing 
how much more is it going to take for us to drop down to these lower areas? Well, simply really is just seeing a couple more of these close options in the negative areas will potentially bring that down to another area. If we hit this area again, guys, by the way, um, around this sort of $97, $96 mark, we've got to keep an eye on that because if it does fail, and again, back to my point, the, the lack of data at these, these areas up in these regions would insinuate to me that there's an opportunity for it to come down lower. That's why I've got my 87 markers and I have got one still slightly lower than that around the 67 mark. Yes, I do still have some orders, uh, hoping more than anything around the $50 mark as well. But at the moment, I'm more interested in that drop down of $10, $20. It's quite a lot of money, guys. If you're trying to accumulate quant in bigger numbers, it does make a difference. So for me personally, I like D saying at this current area of 100, but I've got it in the back of my mind to keep an eye on this in case there's a drop. I'm seeing loads of weird narratives again about stock market crashes, blah, blah, blah. Of course, the interest rates aren't going anywhere. Load of other macro events are still um, within our remit of the world that we live in today, unfortunately. So we just got to bide our time with this, but let's see how this rolls because I will do a YouTube short if I see any significant drops or that drop indeed down to at least the 97 mark again but I'm really interested to see if we hold that ground because if we don't, then we will see that below 80, uh, sorry, below the $90 mark and potentially lower just in case. Albeit it might be for a short time, it's still a great opportunity to accumulate quant at those lower regions. So other than that, guys, the performance on the right-hand side here is not looking great. It's all red. However, it's still quite condensed in the sense that it's not horrible. Uh, but it's showing you the pattern. It's showing me a pattern personally that we've got to keep an eye on this over the next few days because we might see some opportunities at the lower areas. Other than that, guys, that's very much wrapped the quant video up for us today. Leave comments below about anything we talked about today regarding quant and also anything that you want us to cover future-wise, whether it be a different project, a new project, um, or quant itself if we've missed anything in the last week or so. So thanks very much for watching this one, guys. We will see you in the next quant video. Take care. And of course, bye-bye.